My name is Chris Gruhl, Senior Developer with Supply Chain IT. I'm going to go over some of our homegrown Home Depot Eclipse plugins by creating a web application including web services, DAO call, XML serialization, and AJAX jQuery user interface all in about eight minutes. We're going to start by creating a THD web project, which is basically just a dynamic web project that has all of the jQuery libraries and stuff built into it. Once we have our project created, now we're going to run the RESTful Service Wizard, the THT RESTful Service Wizard, which is going to create, uh, it's going to add all the Jersey uh, jars and configure our web.xml uh, and add our class, uh, which is going to be our entry point for the service. Now what we want to do is we want to keep things organized, so we're going to create some um, packages. First we're going to create our business objects package, which is going to house the uh, business layer. Then we're going to create the uh, our database package, which is going to house our DAO layer. And then we're going to create our transformer package, which is going to uh, convert our object to XML. Now let's go ahead and create the uh, empty uh, DAO class. Now what we want to do is we want to go down to our lib folder so that we can add the appropriate uh, DAO jar from the component repository. Once we have that DAO jar selected, it is automatically added to our, our project and we are going to open it up in the DAO Explorer and we're going to scroll down to the selector that we need to use. We're going to highlight that selector and generate a call, generate the code. Uh, we're going to change the SKU contract name on this because their uh, metadata is incorrect in the system, but in most cases you, this will not be necessary. And then we'll add the extra variables that are needed for us to be able to get the responses back. Now we're going to go in and run the Xtreme Transformer wizard, which is going to generate the code necessary for us to convert, uh, for us to serialize our SKU object into XML. We're going to change that alias to something usable like SKU. And we'll go back to the service and we'll start changing the default path variables to the appropriate path to get down to our service. So we'll just put in SKU and then look up. And we'll change a query parameter to SKU. Now we're going to uh, write out the business layer. So we're going to add uh, this class. Now this class isn't created yet. It will be in a second. But we have an empty package waiting for it. Save everything up. And then Eclipse will put it exactly where we want it to go. And now we'll tell it what the function that we want it to create will do. It'll output our result, basically give us what we need. Now for the sake of brevity, what we're going to do is we're going to paste in basically a snippet of code which just pulls out uh, the information that we need out of the DAO and then returns our object, transforms it, and sends it back. It's only a few lines of code. And that's it. Now what we want to do is open up our index.html, which was created by the THG web project. We're going to scroll down to the app body uh, div and start typing in what we want. So we want an input box, uh, type text, and uh, we're going to ID it, give it an ID of SKU number, and then put a little carriage return after that, and then we're going to create a span, um, and we'll just give it a class button and basically that's just going to 
be our button instead of a form. And then we need a place to put our results. So we're going to type in results into a div. And now we're going to come up to the uh, existing uh, jQuery code and tell it to treat our span like a button. So we're going to uh, look up the uh, dot button class and tell it it's a button. And then we're going to daisy chain a click handler onto that um, button request and give it the name of a function that we want to use to handle the clicks that are going to happen when someone clicks on that span. And so now we're going to create uh, that function. Now uh, we need, uh, this is a get request, so we need some query parameters. Uh, we need to look up what the SKU, uh, the SKU number that they typed in is. So we're going to type in uh, SKU number and then uh, with an ID and then val, and then we're going to store that to the SKU variable. We are going to uh, type in the URL that we're going to use and we're just going to go ahead and append the SKU number onto the end of that URL. Now we're going to create our Ajax call to actually go look up the data to our service that we created. Uh, we'll give it a type get which is and then uh, the URL uh, variable and we'll tell it data type XML, we'll just deal with it as XML. And then we want to tell it where to go when the function uh, gives success. And in general, in production, you'd want, you know, uh, a, you know, a fail method as well in there as well, and an error method and so forth. But for the sake of uh, our purposes, let's just, just stick with the success. So create our display data. We're going to deal, for, remember that we have to empty out our result set in case um, it's been run before. So now we'll take the XML results and we're going to find our individual SKU uh, out of there, which is the only thing that it should return. And now we want to look at the children of it and loop through each one. Now we're going to uh, get our results div and we're going to append inside and tell it the uh, tag name and then we are going to add the uh, text value of it and then add a nice little carriage return after that and we'll save it up we'll start up our server and we'll open up Chrome paste in the URL and now let's go ahead and enter in a SKU number and we see that we get the results we're after